long time ago, there was only one mind, which became bored by being alone for so long, so it decided to split into two. But since the two knew they were originally one, playing together was not much fun, as if playing both sides of a chess game. So the two minds agreed to forget from where they came from. They pretended not to know each other. As time passed, they also forgot about their agreement. They forgot they were actually one and the same. This is the condition of our existence. We forget that we are originally from one mind. When an enlightened person transcends the duality of you and me, she sees life as one long play. That is why she remains humorous and lighthearted. She plays her role but never forgets it is a performance. Life is like theater. You are assigned a role. If you don't like the role, keep in mind that you have the power to re recreate the role you want. Hello everyone. I just wanted to share that. I found that very profound little passage from Things You Can Only See When You Slow Down by Hyman Sunim. And I thought that'd be a good way to start today's message because it's just very grounding, very grounding. And this is really a video I feel like that is about grounding, coming from someone who is often finds themselves very ungrounded. And when I say grounded, I don't only mean grounded into the earth or just grounded into this realm, because that is part of it, but there's also being grounded in yourself, your roots, your real roots of your eternal, permanent nature. So I hope this is helpful and grounding if you're feeling anxious or confused or lost, because I know that it's very easy to get lost in thoughts without even realizing you're lost in thoughts because the mind plays some very funny games like that. And just to get to the core of what I want to talk about today, As I was saying before, it's very easy to get sucked into your own thoughts without even realizing you're sucked in your own thoughts. And this often leads to immense suffering. You know, we're always challenged in life, we're always tested, but when you're really just suffering and you can't think your way out of it, and you can't even feel your way out of it, oftentimes it's because you maybe are identifying consciously or unconsciously with thoughts or beliefs or emotions. And this is some really funny, just a funny reminder, because I'm sure many of us are aware of this. Because a lot of times we as humanity can be a little bit arrogant and we think we can control our thoughts and we can control our emotions. And sometimes maybe you can, but there's always going to be times in your life where you can't control your thoughts or you can't control your emotions. It's a weird phenomenon that they arise and they dissolve. Just like you can't control everything that happens in your environment. You can't always control your thoughts. So when you cling to your thoughts as your identity, which is always changing, and it's always oscillating between negative and positive. And it's nice when it's positive, but when it's negative, it's, it can be like in hell. And just to get to the core of it is you can't control your thoughts and emotions, but what you can control always is your eternal nature, your real self, the quiet witness that observes everything, that observes what's happening in your external life, but also what obs observes what's happening in your internal life, what's happening in your thoughts, what's happening in your emotions. 
And what's so beautiful about this is when you can observe from that true higher self, that presence that is eternal, that's always there no matter what, that's always free, that's always peace, that's always love. You always have control there. So it's, so it kind of seems like a paradox. But the funny thing is, as soon as you can come back to that observation, you'll find that any thoughts or emotions you're having, you just observe them from this perspective and they'll dissolve as fast as they arose. It's only when we get sucked in, which can happen very quickly, very easily, and we start identifying with our own judgments, our own critics, our own thoughts and emotions, when we completely identify with them as who we are, that's when we can get lost in those loops and we can get stuck there for a very very long time but as soon as you pull back the observation and you're just a witness you'll find that any thoughts any emotions you're having just observe them and they'll they'll dissolve pretty quickly you know instead of resisting them you know, instead of saying, oh my gosh, this is awful, this is awful, this is awful. Just stare right into what's awful, quietly, and you watch it. It loses its power over you. You know, so I hope that makes sense. You know, you can't always, con it's like trying to control other people. You know, I think we've all had a lot of lessons in that in these times is like you can't no matter what your intention is or you know how right you are or what you can't control what other people are going to do in the same way you can't always control what's going to happen in your life you can't always control the thoughts that are going to arise in your head because if you're really observant truly if you can truly be observant you'll find that these thoughts can come so fast and if you immediately identify with them as complete absolute truth you're, you're probably going to be putting yourself in, in boxes you know and i think that that's when we start to feel really weighed down and heavy because naturally we want to be free and i think this is all about freedom and truly being free and learning how to be free and learning how to let go of that control that's the funny paradox is as you let go of that control Without expectation, it's like you gain back all the control. I think that we are very much the guardians of our minds, our presence, our soul. You know, meaning when you are observing negative thoughts arise in your mind, fearful thoughts arise in your mind, um, guilty or shameful thoughts arise in your mind without judging them, without saying they're good or bad, they're right or wrong. If you can just observe them. And <clears throat> give them love. Give your mind love. Give your mind compassion. Give yourself compassion. You don't have to identify with, with every thought that comes up. You know? I hope this is helpful. Because it's you know that your mind will have you running all over the place and that brings me to a really good analogy I had as I was pondering this when I was meditating yesterday and I was watching my cat run around the yard and he's goofball and he runs all over uh, and just like shoot across the yard and climb up a tree and then like totally abandon that and run to the other side of the yard and chase a bug or sometimes he doesn't even I don't think he even knows what he's doing he's just running around from this to that really um like hyperactively and it made me really laugh because it reminded me of my mind you know that's how how my mind can be just racing around uh investigating this analyzing that like jumping on that and 
when you just observe that, it's it's actually it is lighthearted and comical. It's curious. It's like, you know, again, if you are like the guardian of your mind, it's like you can have love and compassion for it, and it really changes your whole reality. It sh instantly with an instant. And sometimes it's tricky because the mind observes itself too. So sometimes the mind observing itself can feel like the observer, but it's really not. It's your presence observing the mind as a whole, observing the human experience as a whole without judging it, you see. Because when you judge, a lot of times you attach, and that's when we, we really prolong our own slavery in a way to ourselves to our own minds you know it's like the age-old saying the mind is an amazing servant but a ruthless master you know the mind isn't supposed to be our guardian we are the guardian of our minds we are the protectors of our minds that's what I'm really saying so you can watch your mind negative thoughts enter your mind from many different things it could be anything like I said you you have I feel like it's important to be humble that you can't always control that. You know, I think that's an illusion to think that you can control all your thoughts. Because sometimes they come out of left field and there's all kinds of ways that that, that can happen. But when you know that and you come back to your observation, those thoughts have no power over you. You know, it's like an old proverb. It's like a thief breaking into an empty house. It's like they can't steal anything from you. When you're in your higher presence, your higher awareness... Your thoughts and feelings, you can observe them and you you feel them. You don't want to repress them. There's a difference. You can observe them and feel them and, and think them. But you're not going to be a slave to them no matter what. No matter if they're positive or negative in this duality. Because life is always going to be changing. You know? So I hope that's helpful. I hope that's some food for thought. You know, because as I was watching my cat run around the yard doing all these crazy things, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, judging him. I wasn't thinking like, oh, you stupid cat, what are you, are you stupid, you know what I mean? But it's like, that's how we can be in our mind. And that's really what this is about and why I feel like this is so important. Because I do it too and I see it all the time is we really torture ourselves. You know, we really torture ourselves with, with, with identifying with, these thoughts and a lot of times we don't realize it just like just so mean to ourselves you know these these beliefs these limiting beliefs that that are arising you know and we don't have to identify with them just observe them oh there's something wrong with me oh I'm doing this oh you know and and they can be very analytical and very deep and very intelligent but there's a point when that intellect can't really do anything other than continue to go down the rabbit hole. And that's why coming back into the witness, who has the real power, who's always giving us opportunities to wake up. You know, really wake up. Wake up to what's happening. What is this happening? Wake up to our thoughts and feelings, you know, without being completely sucked in and immersed, but observing them lovingly, compassionately. I feel like that's just very important, you know. I'm really grateful for these messages because I found myself really getting sucked into some thoughts and it can happen so quickly and so easily, you know, when we start, it can happen in the blink of an eye. You can just have like, a, you know, a fear enter your mind and it's like you just see the whole scenario of the, the worst case scenario play out in your mind in literally the blink of an eye, you know? And if you completely are immersed and you just are in it, it's, it's fun in a way, it's adventurous. You know, I think we're here for adventure. So don't beat yourself up about it. But when you're, when you're ready to kind of escape that, you know, constantly being pulled around like a cork in the water, come back to your observation. And you'll see that that was just a thought. That's all it was. It doesn't define you. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, that's not who you are. You're not your thought. You're not your emotion. You're just having thoughts and emotions. 
And again, the less you cling to them, the less you judge them, the less you make it good or bad, right or wrong, and you just observe it, the more you're going to continue to just enjoy life, you know, as, as this beautiful adventure. Because nothing in this physical world is ever going to fulfill you, truly. You know, it's all going to be changing constantly. And even, the, even you know, there's really nothing that's going to fulfill you permanently. It's like you have to come into your presence, into your inner God, into your spirit, which is always fulfilled. You know, however you experience that. It's so amazing as we're truly, you know, ascending consciousness, ascending our consciousness and coming out of these mental programs we've been in, coming out of this matrix of these very limiting beliefs, you know, that's just how I see it and I, and I am experiencing it. Many of us are because it's, it's really a collective phenomenon of the, of humanity. You know, we're all connected <laughs> there's no other way around it so it's amazing to have these kinds of experiences so i think that's all i really want to say in this video and i hope that's helpful to you and i hope that you know you are kind to yourself and gentle with yourself and loving with yourself and you know honoring yourself and protecting your mind you know Truly protecting your mind and being the guardian of your mind. When your mind does have negative thoughts, when you're the observer, it's like you can comfort the mind, you know, instead of playing into its fantasies, which can, you know, maybe be fun, but, but all too often they can be very, very scary and fearful and destructive. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope this was helpful, or at least some food for the heart, some food for the soul. And I'm really grateful to be here, you know, especially in these times when there's so many things unfolding, so many things, so many, so many oddities, so many anomalies, um, and it's only the beginning. And really, this is all you truly have, you know, especially in, in really challenging points in your life. Your presence, your witness, that's completely eternal and powerful and whole will always be there. And that's the most powerful source that we all have. We all have it. You know, there's nothing outside of yourself that will ever give you what this will give you when you can really be present with it and just allow it into your heart. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Thank you and have a beautiful day.